First Kings. Uh, in case you were having trouble with that, we'll help you. Uh, actually, do you need a Bible? Yeah, do you want to need a Bible? Raise your hand if you need a Bible. Uh, we have a backslid lady right over here in the corner. My wife uh, is Oh, first. whoa, the whole side is backslid on this side. Okay. Backslid. And, uh, of course, the one I gave a really nice Bible. Oh, it's for your mom? No, it's for you. It's for both of them. Uh, we're going to blame that on you. No. Okay, the, when you leave your stuff here, we put it in the closet. And so if you're missing a Bible, and it's a King James Bible, if we just take the other ones and those go right in the garbage. Uh, and so we, we don't even want to use those for roasted marshmallows. Uh, they go right in the garbage. But if you left the King James Bible in here, we've got a bunch in the closet. <laughs> that might be where everybody's in. Carlos is there? The one I bought, Carlos? It's in the closet. Do you want Carlos? Do you want some music? Bible. All right, everybody got Bibles now? And Okay, go. So. I'm waiting on Carlos. Should, should I play some music? No, 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 no. There's no help in this voice. It'll be a good gift for some folks this year. A Bible. Lisa just bought one of her friends one. The price went up for us. Double. Uh, uh, I did do this. I, I'm trying to win on Carlos here. Let's all give him a hand. Welcome back. Welcome back, Carlos. Uh, I did order. What's that? Okay. I did order. Uh, let me say this before I forget. There's a list out there in the foyer on the table for everybody that's coming to the New Year's uh, party because JR and they have, they have some ideas about some games we're going to break up. We've got teams. So we need everybody to write down who's coming for New Year's Eve uh, there and for the games. And so make sure you do that. Now, uh, I did order, and I've talked to a few people in the church, uh, some 365-day devotional books from uh, uh, okay. Striving Together out in Lancaster, California. Uh, they're normally uh, $15 a pop, but we got them for $8 shipped and everything here. And so they're very nice hardcover uh, books. And so if you haven't told me you wanted one, please see me we only have 30 of them. And, and they're moving quick, and we're just trying to get those in the hands of our folks so they can walk with the Lord. Uh, and and, and have a, it gives you a plan every day. It gives you a lot of other stuff to teach you how to lead a person to Christ. And it's a really nice, extensive book. And so uh, if you want one of those, please see me. They, they're, uh, they're supposed to be in here in the next couple of days. I checked on the shipping, and so they're somewhere in Ohio, so they're coming. And so uh, we just looked, and they said, oh, Ohio. So uh, Buckeye, Ohio, matter of fact, Buckeye, Ohio. Yes, I know exactly where they are. Uh, the other day, uh, I had preached, never mind. We have an app on our phone where I can find my wife. And so it's nice. I'm like... Where is she at? What is taking her so long? And, I, and I saw that she was in a store in Jersey on the way home to the kids. And I said, I couldn't figure out what store that was. So I texted her, what store are you at? And she's like, voila. <laughs> and I said, okay, we'll let that get out She stood soft in the stores. We're in trouble. We don't let her keep her, keep her debit cards during Christmas. Are you men that think about getting married? Take them. Take the debit card because you'll go straight into the poorhouse and win. Come on. No, no, no. That's the independent women. Up. All the independent ones. No, no, no. All right, anyways, uh, don't take them because they'll, they'll, they'll slice you up. One time, I. All right. Let's preach. Preach. We got no time. Second Kings chapter number two. I do not take her money. She just buy whatever she wants to buy. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something real quick. As far as husbands and wives, there are two people, husband and wife. One is a spender and one is the one that saves the house. This is always the way it is. My dad is a spender, my mom does the checking and all that, takes care of it. I take care of every day and she's the spender. And so we. But that's because I don't want her to worry about money. And I said, you know, we don't stress out about it. I just said, I take care of it. I'll say, okay, let's put the brakes on. Uh, we, we need to buy a sack of potatoes, some, some oil, and some ketchup. 
and you can make seven different potatoes out of the bag of potatoes. And ramen noodles. When that happens, she knows we're out of money. And then she also likes the one, go down to the church, see if there's anything in there. We, we scour the cupboard sometimes, make hot sauce soup and stuff like that. And we're having a bad time. All right, good. Perfect time. My message is 20 minutes. All right, 2 Kings chapter number 2. We're going to begin reading in verse number 1. Uh, we're going to read through this, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of what's going on here. And then I want to preach directly at you tonight. Maybe God can help you, help all of us. Uh, it's helped me, and I really want it to help us. Uh, Acts, or Acts. 2 Kings chapter number 2, verse number 1 says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went from, with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, wait here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and, and liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said, Knowest thou the Lord will take away thy master from thy, from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were with him were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And fifty of the sons of prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they stood by the Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it together, that's his coat, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so they Went, so that they went to, to went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were going over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken from thee, away from thee. And Elisha said this, look at it now, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. God, I pray that you give me clarity of thought. Please help me as I uh, try to uh, uh, give what you've given me and pray that it will be a blessing to our folks. And God, we see something, hear something from the Word of God tonight that would be with us and change us. Please help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Now, I want you to understand, Elijah with the J was a man of God. Elijah uh, uh, had God all over him. And if you read back in the Bible in 1 Kings, uh, uh, I, I don't even remember it's at 1 Kings chapter number 4, I believe it is. Elijah the Tishbite comes onto the scene. Doesn't, it, doesn't say anything about him, about where, where who he had been, who his parents were, what life he had lived. It just says Elijah the Tishbite comes. And, and God gets on Elijah. And, and what, I said that for this reason. God can take any one of us and do something with us. Doesn't matter where we came from. Doesn't matter how we were raised. Elijah the Tishbite, God came to him and touched him. It was the time when Ahab was there. He was a wicked king. And he had a wife named Jezebel. And she was wicked. And God said, Elijah, why don't you go down and tell Ahab that it ain't going to rain for three and a half years. And I want you to make it be known that I told you that. And he went to him. And Elijah had to go hide out after he told him the news. And the ravens came and fed Elijah. Elijah meat from their mouths and, and, and he was down in this little brook and he was watered down there and then after that he sent Elijah to a little widow woman who had a little bit of meal and told her make me a cake and she said listen I can't make you a cake I'm going to die he said make me a cake and God blessed it and a lot went on in Elijah 
Elijah's life. Elijah was there on Mount Carmel with uh, with all the, the 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 people of Baal and and, and the men that made up the uh, uh, the, the the wicked uh, the, the, the the wicked people that were going on in that day. About four hundred prophets of Baal and these different ones. And Elijah said, uh, he asked the God of heaven to call down fire in front of him. And God killed him right there. And, and boy, Elijah went on and did miracle after miracle. He raised the little boy from the dead. And lives went on in Elijah's life. And so now we come to it in uh, 2 Kings chapter number 2. In chapter number 1, uh, the king of, uh, of, of uh, Syria was after Elijah. And, and, and so God, the king of Syria tells uh, some of his men, take 50 men and go down there and get Elijah. And Elijah called down fire from heaven to kill the first 50. Then Elijah called down fire from heaven to kill the second 50. And then they finally got hip to it, got wise to it. And God told Elijah, don't kill no more. Go down there and tell him what I said. And so he goes down and pronounces judgment on the king of Syria. And, and so right in the next chapter, we see that Elijah and Elisha are getting ready to go to Bethel and then to Jericho and then to Jordan. And so what I'm going to say, and what I want to say when I said that, is because I believe Elisha was with Elijah when all these miracles were going on, most of them. And he saw the man of God do some great and mighty things. And it blew his mind. He said, that's unbelievable. And he says, Elijah, I'm going down to Bethel, wait here. And, and some people think that he probably did that because he was going down to talk to God and he was being humble. And he didn't want Elijah to come with him and he wasn't trying to get rid of him. I don't know why he did that, but the fact of the matter is the Bible says he did that. And Elisha says, no, no, I'm going where you're going. I want what you got. He said, Elijah, I'm going to Jordan, wait here. I'm going to Jericho, wait here. No, no, I'm going with you. And the sons of the prophets came to him. Which places? That was what we would call a Bible college in this day. There's a bunch of these people studying, uh, trying to be close to the Lord, and they were coming to him. And I don't know what their point was when they came to him, but they said, Know you not that your master, the head of your uh, the, the man that your head's going to leave you today? And some people think they were mocking him. Some people were just trying to think they were sympathizing with him. I don't know why, and that has nothing to do with my message. But Elijah would, Elisha would not leave Elijah. And he wanted to be a part of Elijah's life. And then he says this. Ask me what you want, Elijah, Elisha. In chapter number 2, in, in verse number uh, 9, it came to pass when we were going over to Elijah, said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Now, if you know anything about Elijah, Elijah was in, in here just a little bit in the chapter, is taken away in a whirlwind. He doesn't even die on this earth. He's one of... At this point in time, the Enoch was translated, uh, Moses' body was never found, uh, and then Elijah. They get taken out of here. Before he gets taken out, he says, Elisha, ask what you want. Look what it says now. Uh, uh, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Yeah. Thou has asked a hard thing. Listen to me now. Elijah was an unbelievable man of faith, a man of God, and miracles were happening with him. And Elisha says, I want double. And Elijah says, Elisha, thou has asked a hard thing. But the best part of that phrase, the best part of that uh, piece of scripture is the word nevertheless. He said, thou hast asked a hard thing, but nevertheless. And he goes on to tell him, if you see me when I'm taken up, God's going to give you the double portion. So now I don't want to talk to you about, uh, about uh, what Elisha had. What Elisha had. What did he have, Brother Burton? He had a lot going on for him. And God did something. Listen to me. Sunday night is the biggest night in the history of our church. Yeah. It is the biggest thing. We, I don't want to see one empty seat in this place. I'd like to see all of us standing in the back. Because God blew in and brought people here. And hey, listen, it's not an easy thing. And I won't be let down no matter who comes. 
Because it's God's place and we're doing our best. And, and listen, God says, you ask the hard thing, Brother Burton, but nevertheless, listen to me. Why did Elisha get the double portion? Why did he get the double portion? Because we go on and read it, we'll see that God did give him a double portion. And man, Elisha did twice as much, twice as many miracles as Elijah did. That's right. And he wasn't afraid to ask for a hard thing. And listen to me, I don't know where you're from, or where you come from, or what you're thinking tonight, or, or what's going on in your life. But listen, it's time that we ask God for some hard things. Yes. Listen, it's time to stop living in, I got saved here and that's the only miracle that ever happened to you. Because God ain't looking to give you just that miracle. God saved you so he can do miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Right. And he wants to do something big with us. Amen. Starting this Sunday night, what's going to take us praying, us living for the Lord, us doing something. God wants to do something big in my marriage. God wants to do something big in your families. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And it's a hard thing for us. See, see, Elijah said, Elisha, thou has asked a hard thing. But he wasn't saying it would be hard for God to do that. He was saying, you've asked for something that's hard to everybody else. Mm -hmm. But it's not hard for me. And tonight I want you to see four things that Elisha had that helped him to get what he got. Number one, Elisha had perseverance. It was easy for Elijah, Elisha, not to, I'm always talking about Elisha here, okay? So if I say Elijah, don't get confused. It was easy for Elisha not to look back. Why? Because he got rid of everything that was in the back. If you'll go back, I don't want to take you there. It's a lack of time. Uh, but in uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter number 19, uh, 19 to 21, you go back and Elijah came to Elisha and said, you're coming with me. And Elijah had to take care of some family business first. And then Elijah went, Elisha went, and he had 12 yoke of oxen. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? He had 24 oxen. He had, and he was plowing with them. What does that mean? That means he was plowing with one, the Bible said. Who was plowing with the other 11? That means he had people working for him. Now listen to me, I'm getting somewhere with this. He had people working for him. He had these oxen, which were worth something back in these days. And Elijah took them and burned all the oxen for food, burned his plows, and went on with the Lord, went with the Lord's man, Elijah. That's right. Now listen to me, he had perseverance. He, didn't, he wasn't looking back on what it used to be and what it was. He wasn't pulled down by that stuff. He went on pressing on the upward way. He was going after it. He had perseverance. Uh, he wasn't stopping. Listen, if we're going to get what Elijah had, then listen, I got the same God Elijah has. Right, right. I got the same God Elisha had. I got the same God Peter had. And it takes perseverance. That's what we're lacking in our churches today are people that are trying to persevere. And, and listen, we all throw that word trying out the door and stop trying to do anything because everybody in this room is big enough and old enough to do something instead of trying to do something. Right. All that we try to do is when it comes to God. But we don't try to do the other things. We don't try to eat. We don't try to go out and have fun. We, we try to come to church. We try to be good Christians. Think about all the tries in your life and see where they're at. Right. Most of them will be there. And listen, God wants us to persevere. And we can persevere. We don't have to settle for the junk. Elijah, man, he, he was a man of God. Elisha said, I want what he has. Even though Elijah asked him to stay, he wasn't going to. He was going to persevere on through it. Luke 9, 62, and Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Hey, listen to me. We need some people that are going to persevere. Well, we're, how are we going to persevere? Well, we're going to persevere Saturday when we come up here and we hand out the thousand that we probably still got left. How many of those Christmas tracts are we handing out? Because it's not been very empty every night, every service. Hey, listen. He said, well, I forgot. I understand that. And I forget a lot of stuff. Let's not forget tonight. Christmas is next week. People will take those cards. You tell them, I have a Christmas card I'd love to give you. That, that makes a lot of headway. Someone might read the back of that thing and God changed their life. we got to persevere. we got to persevere when we go out and tell all these kids Sunday or Saturday about Sunday. We're going to have a talk with their moms and dads and say, now you're going to be able to make it. We hope that you can. And, and the kids are going to love it. It's going to be awesome. And by the way, do you know the Lord? Do you know Him? I mean, that's persevering. 
Uh, persevere when we don't feel good. Persevere when we don't want to. We do it anyway. That's right. And so that's what we need to do. That's what Elijah and Elisha did. So Elisha was a man with perseverance. Elisha, number two, was a man with commitment. At Gilgal and, and Bethel and Jericho, Elisha refused to leave. So he got to the Jordan. So I'm not going to leave you. I am not stopping. Paul said in Acts 20, 24, but none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I received in the Lord Jesus to testify of the grace of God, the gospel of the grace of God. Hey, listen, come hell or high water, I'm sticking in this thing. And hey, that's commitment. Uh, you know, I, I hate this. I, always, I don't know if I've told you this in a long time, but I studied out the word commit in any form of the word commit in the Bible uh, in 2005. Well, Paul, was you there when I preached that message here? Don't really trust, delight, and commit. I, I, I stood out there with commit, and I found it's in the Bible like 200 and something times, any form of commit. Commitment, committed, all this stuff. Over 200 times, and only like 10 times was it a good commitment in the whole Bible. Wow. The rest of them were all negative commitments. What's that tell you, brother? Well, I just think a good application would be we're committed to a lot of stuff that doesn't matter and that's wrong, and we've got to get committed to God. That's true. I mean, that's the important thing in life. Yeah. God's not a step stool. He's not a second thought. He's not a leftover God. He don't want our leftovers. He wants us full, full speed ahead. Listen, are you committed to the Lord? Elisha was committed. He said, Elijah, you ain't leaving me. Hey, where the church goes, I go. Where the pastor leads, I'll go. Where the church is headed, that's what we're doing. When we go out, we're all going out. When we go in, we're going to stay in and pray. When we're in the place, we're going to be in that place. We're going to be where God wants to do it. Elisha, Elijah, I'm not leaving you. You're not leaving me. And I love the church. Amen. I love the church of God. I like when I go. I like going other places, but I like this church. That's right. But I'm glad that we go to other places. That there's a common bond. It's Jesus Christ, yeah. and they're committed to what God wants us to be committed to. So he was a man with perseverance. He was a man with commitment. Number three, he was a man with vision. That's good. He knew in whom he should stay. There were schools of prophets. During those times, but he said, I'm going with Elijah. I said, know you not that your master is going to be taken away from me today? And they said, Elijah, wherever you're going, I'm going. He had the vision of Elijah. He wanted to go where Elijah wanted him to go. Where there is no vision, the people perish. He knew what was needed. He knew, I don't need the school of the prophets. I need the spirit of Elijah. Listen, folks. We need to get a fresh vision for what God would have for our life. And, and listen to me. God is not a part of anything where he is not absolutely in first place in your life. Not first place with your lips. Say that he's in first place with your life. So, Brother Burton, do you think he's first place in my life? Come see me after the service. I ask you about five questions and you'll tell me. It's easy. I'm just telling you, man, we've got to be persevering. We've got to be committed, but we have to have a vision for what God has for us. Yeah. Man, Elijah didn't mess around, and Elisha saw it. He says, I want to, hey, you asked the hard thing, Elisha, but nevertheless. Yeah. Well, what did Elisha have? He had perseverance, he had commitment, he had vision. He knew what was needed. He knew he needed Elijah's uh, spirit upon him. And number four, and we're done, he had integrity. Integrity. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked. I looked it up for us. <laughs> the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Strong moral principles. Being honest. Uh, Elijah was or wanted to receive the same spirit of Elijah. He had, he, if he was going to get that, he was going to have to have integrity to do what Elijah did. You understand that? Don't well, you understand how much blood has been given so you can sit in here tonight? And I'm not talking about the U.S. Armed Forces, which would be a good one too. I'm talking about the blood of the saints, yeah. the people that have been killed. I mean, listen to me. Someone come to, uh, they asked uh, Franklin, uh, uh, what, what's his name? The old 
old preacher, Franklin uh, Graham. That's not the old, but it's on Franklin Graham. Now, I was proud of him seeing that. He says, Mr. Graham, don't you think it'd be better? That lady on the Fox News said this. Don't you think it'd be better if those people, instead of being killed over there, and, and wouldn't it be better if they just said they weren't with Jesus so they can live? And Franklin Graham said, absolutely not. Amen. Many have died for the cause of Christ, and we ought to take a stand for them. Amen. We ought to stand up for it. Yeah, and listen, many people have died so that you could sit here. That's right. Uh, and, and I can preach a message on America uh, to let you know that too, but I'm just telling you, That's right. man, we, we've got something that we ought to be fighting for, man. They, they took their babies and threw them into trees because they wouldn't let them baptize them. They, they ripped their tongues out and cut them out because they wouldn't quit talking about Jesus. They put them on tables and took their intestines and pulled them out inch by inch to torturing Christians. They put them in skins of animal clothes and fed them to lions. Why? Because they wouldn't renounce it. They wouldn't say no. Man, we've got a great heritage. Yeah, I, I go back to them and, and listen to me. I, I would die for the cause of Christ. And, 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 and I'm not afraid to die for cause rest, but I'm thankful that I don't have to. Amen. But so I don't have to. Why don't, why don't I live for him now? Mm -hmm. I mean, God, Elijah was, he had perseverance, commitment, and vision. Hey, listen, what about us tonight? I mean, I'm just asking you, what about those people who gave their lives so we could have what we have? They had integrity. And that's what we need to have, integrity. This day and age we live in where people just lie, lie, lie. The church lies. People in the church just flat out lie. All the time. And I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the church of God, the whole thing. And I, I, a liar drives me crazy. I think it is apt. My, my wife, she's not a liar, but she's never to phone and exaggerate a little bit with her mom about something that doesn't matter. And I said, that ain't true. And it really, you know, she's not, you say, okay, right, it ain't true then, okay. Uh, but, you know, it drives me crazy telling one little one. And these people died for us. And, and, and Elisha, man, God put it on him. And look, what we need is a hard thing. We need to stop living in the yesteryear, last year, and last week, and ask God to blow in and put the spirit of Elijah on us. Yes. I mean, you know, God can do that. We need to empty the only way we can get the new spirit is if we empty the old spirit. And some people ain't let empty enough of that old spirit out for the new one to ever come in. What's so funny? They're, they're not funny about my message. Hey, the old one has to be pulled out so something new can be put in, David. It's Amen. got to be getting rid of. We need God to do something. Amen. I don't want to see our kids uh, be, be left in the dark because I didn't have the spirit of God on me. And because you didn't have the spirit of God on you, man, we need a double portion. And Sunday, if we all got busy praying right now and really, really went to God in prayer this week for the next few days, you understand God could blow in and we wouldn't have enough seats. Yes, so is that going to be good? Yes, it'll be good. To hear them talk about Christ the whole time, that little play about Christ, and have a preacher get up and tell them about deep Christ. Yeah. Amen. And then they'll, they'll see a bunch of folks that look like them in here, yeah. and that are just like them that got saved. Amen. I mean, that's what we're all about, folks. The church was never a place just to meet and hang out. And I thank God nobody here believes that. But you did it one time just like I did. But then you had a preacher that would say, now listen. Maybe you ought to come out sometime. Maybe you ought to come. Hey, ask yourself, what's the last time a preacher really came to me and it's a free, you know, you need to be out there? Because if I haven't, I've kind of given up on it. You say, well, I don't think you ought to give up. Well, I, I think I ought to. I can only get in your face and say it on so many times. Now it's up to you to get God on you. And so God can get you back out there. We've got to go after this thing. I want to, I'd rather talk to the ones that are doing something and congratulate them and lift them up than worry about the ones that ain't. It takes a double portion of God's Spirit upon us for us to want to do anything for Him. Amen. And God wants to. I mean, I'd, I'd love to get on Facebook Sunday night and say, man, 30 people got saved tonight. God blew in, filled the church house up, gave us a bunch of prospects, gave us some people we can go after now, and love on, and those little kids. They're sitting up here and looking at their mom and looking at them and, and wishing that their mom would get saved. You know what I mean? Those little kids come down here to Super Church and what you, what you come for? 
pray for my mama. Yes. Yeah, I'll right. pray for my mama. They were all a little yeah. sincere, seven years old. Pray for my mama. I'm just saying, now you've got a voice like me. I'm just saying, man, we need God to do something. Amen. And God wants to, man, but if we just sit and let it go and just go through the motions and, and listen to me, folks. And most folks in this room have been here long enough to, to now you're going to go through the motions if you don't make a move. See, in the beginning, it's like, wow, God saved me. I can't believe it, man. I ain't gotten high in two months, three months, a year. God's doing something in my life. This is unbelievable. And then eventually five years into it, we miss a reading day. We miss this. We miss the service. The next thing you know, we're like the rest of them that are out right now and aren't committed to nothing but themselves. Yeah. I'm, I'm just telling you, the devil's strong. He'll do that to us. Man, Elijah, Elijah persevered. He was uh, committed, he had a vision, and he had integrity. Look at verse 13 and 14, we'll go home. He took up the, also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He took his mantle, the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When they also smote the water, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over Hey, to be blessed like Elijah, he had to be ready to follow and do what Elijah did. Guys, listen to me. Listen to me real quick. We're done. He had to be willing to do what Elijah did. Now, this is not your fault, but we can confess it as the sin of our church, not our church, but the church in general, like Nehemiah did for, his, for, for Israel. It wasn't his fault, but he confessed it. But listen to me. They're not killing us. But those people all stood strong and the word of God prevailed through the dark ages. And the King James Bible was written in 1611. And it has prevailed, prevailed, and prevailed. Mm -hmm. Carried it to a bookstore today and they don't even sell it in some of the stuff there because nobody wants it anymore. Well, what does that mean, Brother Burton? It doesn't mean that the church lost its power. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that the church isn't supposed to act like the nail-biting Christians that they were two or three hundred years ago. When they were serious as a heart attack. We are soldiers for Christ. We need to take this thing as serious as a heart attack and beg God to do something and revive us again. And He can do that, will do that, wants to do that. And I want to see Him do it. And I want to be an old man and say He did it. I don't want to be an old man to walk the chair and say he did it the first five years, but the last 15 were hard. And, and folks just got cold to God. We lost so many of them, and all our kids went to hell, and, and they got out and did their own thing, and people wanted this. And Folks, you understand, that can't happen very easily here. Yeah. If we're not committed, like Elijah, Elisha was, perseverance and commitment and vision and integrity, doing right and having moral character, that's the church of the living God. And it ain't changed. We've changed. But God's plan for the church never changed. It's all written in that book. And that book has not changed one iota. Amen. Nothing's changed in it. We've got the power of Elijah with us. The power of God upon us. And we've got to charge hell with a water, with a water pistol and, and get after this thing and be totally committed to Christ in these last days. Yeah. They're killing them like... Like, I mean, they're just unbelievable over there in Syria and Lebanon. You watch the news. Folks, do not be closed up and think that Kensington is all is it. The world is dying and going to hell, and everybody over in uh, those areas, in those, those Muslim areas, they're just killing them left and right right now. And we ain't hearing about none of that. None of that stuff. That stuff doesn't matter to anybody. But if we got together and prayed, we started begging God to blow in and do something with us like we did the night before I prayed. I was, something was wrong with me. We got a hold of God and God blew in there and touched me. The care said, what's wrong with God? I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. Well, then I prayed. And God said, you're different now. I said, I prayed. I was praying in all the sports started praying today at home. I mean, I, hey, listen. We need the Spirit of God. Yes. Not just for this weekend, but we're going to have some horrid things. So I know church will be a hard thing. Keeping this one's going to be a hard thing. But God says, nevertheless, if you'll, if you'll stay there and look for my spirit, I'll give it to you. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you bless the invitation. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the word of God. Help us to be 
uh, what we're supposed to be for you, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us tonight, Lord. And God, I do pray for this Sunday. It'll be an amazing day. God, I pray for tonight. It'll be an amazing night. As we go home and cut out the chitter-chatter and the, the, the bickering if, 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 if the devil would love for us to do right after this service. We have the Spirit of God upon us tonight as we go to bed and as we wake up and as we do the things that you have us to do. God, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. May we get close to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can come if you'd like to come. I know it's late. If you have to go, you have to go. But why don't you do business with the Lord tonight? He's worth it. He's worth it all.